Once again, good afternoon. Thank you. And welcome to St. Agnes Parish. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. And we have the following announcements. Please pray for the repose of the souls of Raymond McGowan and John Lubinsky, who died this week. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Mass with anointing of the sick will be celebrated this Wednesday at 11 a.m. Consider bringing a homebound or infirmed loved one or neighbor to experience God's love and the support of our parish family. All are invited to join Bishop Kulik at the Cathedral for Eucharistic Adoration and Benediction for Divine Mercy Sunday at 3 p.m. Please silence electronic devices and prepare your hearts for worship as we stand and recite the prayer for Eucharistic Revival. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread who satisfies the hunger of the human heart. In the Eucharist, the bread and wine become your body and blood, the gift of yourself to the church. Deepen our faith in your Eucharistic presence and strengthen us as members of the church, the body of Christ, as we encounter and revere. Open us to the needs of our brothers and sisters here and everywhere throughout the world. Help us to reveal your love, your promise, your presence to them by our lives and all we say. And our gathering song can be found in Gather Book, hymn number 524, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Redemption, 
graciously blessed this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful, to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the covenant you were to enter upon with the human race, and last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, who grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter received their baptism. The Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. I saw water flowing from the right side of the temple. I saw water flowing, alleluia. It brought God's life and his salvation.
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what bond they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. Awe came from everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live on new, declaring the works of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our eyes. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indestructible and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand to his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. 
Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. You'll notice the new vestments tonight. I want to thank the Christian Mothers and Ladies Guild for these. Now I got a haircut today in the vestments, so this is as the best I'm going to look. <laughs> so it's Divine Mercy Sunday. The resurrection has happened, and we're hopeful with a celebration of the redemption and look forward to the new life of spring. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday we remember that overwhelming divine mercy that Jesus offers each of us. In our Gospels, we see the disciples hiding where they had the Last Supper, secured behind locked doors. Think of their emotions. Fear after watching Jesus being tortured. Guilt from running and hiding. And hopelessness and just the lost nature without Jesus. But then Jesus passes into the room and appears to them. And his first words are, peace be with you. He did not condemn them. He didn't punish them for abandonment or lack of faith. He showed his infinite mercy. He reveals his full body and soul. The presence of the wounds of the crucifixion show his risen body was the same one that died on the cross. The resurrection is not a return of a human being to ordinary mortal life, but a total transformation into that glorious mode of existence. The sad emotions are gone, and then I rejoice with the risen Lord. But Thomas wasn't with him at the first appearance, and he wants proof that it was Jesus. When Jesus returns, Thomas touches the holes and he believes after he feels them. Blessed are those who believe but haven't seen. In the reading from John, we hear that Jesus, what Jesus has done for us. It's just an expression of love. Everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In the way we know that we are love, we are the children of God, and if we obey his commandments. They're not burdensome. But whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. The victory conquers the world is our faith. Jesus came to forgive sins. He wants us to follow him and share his love. We are the children of God. And so we have divine mercy. In 1931, Sister Faustina was given an image by God. We have this image in the back of our nave with Sister Faustina and, and St. John Paul II looking on from either side. To describe the image, the pale ray stands for the water, which makes souls righteous. The red ray stands for the blood, which is the life of souls. These two rays issued forth from the depths of my most tender mercy at the time when my agonizing heart was opened by a lance on the cross. Fortunate is the one who will dwell in their shelter. For the just hand of God shall not lay hold of them. That divine mercy reminds us of the sacrifice of the one for all of us. In that divine mercy, one of the prayers, Eternal Father, I offer you body and blood, soul and divinity, your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and for those of the whole world. Think of what that means for us. Then it through, in the chaplet, we'd use the rosary beads, repeat the mantra, for the sake of your sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of that sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. It's a focus. And as we ask for that intimate mercy that is offered by his passion, we claim it not only for ourselves, but for all. Through his mercy and the sacrament of reconciliation, we become a new creation, a better creation in God. When God works his definitive act of salvation at the end times, we will be perfectly purified. But today we can come, become a new creation through Jesus. From the book of Joel, he will pour out his spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams in those days. I will pour out my spirit. It's that obedience to God which makes our heart receptive and capable of that rich divine love. So how should we live? How do we keep this dream? How do we stay focused? Well, I was thinking of an example, and as you know, Pittsburgh's a big sports town. I generally don't follow women's basketball, but I'm intrigued by this Caitlin Clark. She's a women's basketball player from Iowa. She, of course, has great natural talent, but you see the discipline, her dedication, the hard work, and all her extra practice. And she plays with a team, and not for herself. Great with her scoring, but generous in her passing. But behind her play, she has a faith-filled supporting environment. Her family is well known by their, in their local parish with her parents, and she was raised between two brothers. The National Catholic Register quotes her while at her Catholic high school, saying, we get to live our lives every day at Dowling, starting every day with prayer and every, ending every day with prayer. This is the big reason why Dowling is such a special place and special culture to go to school. Even this great athlete is rooted in faith. For us, this devotion to her sport is the way we need to approach our faith that focus on faith. Ask yourself questions like, how do, can I become a better disciple and get closer to Jesus? How do I open my heart to love? What do I need to stop doing? Can I accept the divine mercy that's offered to me? When I do sin, do I seek that reconciliation to restore my relationship with God? This discipline of living with Jesus as our number one focus and using that to support our goals will be able to focus and reach eternal life. So as I close, I want to return to the gospel message. Jesus says to his disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Just like the bishop breathes on the oil at the chrism mass. Those whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. And those whose sins are retained, that you retain are retained. Jesus has empowered the church and his disciples and our priests to forgive our sins. <laughs> and he has risen, indeed. He has given each of us his divine mercy to allow us to be a new creation with the Holy Spirit flowing through us. Maybe we can believe without seeing, or maybe we need to have proof like Thomas. Either way, we know Jesus comes to us in peace. He offers his divine mercy to heal us. So I would encourage you, before you leave today, take a moment to pray with our image in the back of the nave, and remember the closing words of the Divine Mercy Chaplet, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Be that new creation.
because you're sitting in church. Every day you listen to the holiday, you're distracted, and then they say something like, huh, that was me today. I mean, you said the beginning, right at the beginning, the resurrection is not a list of an event, but it's the, the life of transformation. Brothers and sisters, this is awesome. This is our faith. Life of God is poured into our souls. Let us now together stand and profess the faith that we share. During this Easter season, we'll pray the Apostles' Creed. This can be found on page 10 of your breaking bread and select. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he has come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Now in confidence, we entrust in these prayers and concerns of our hearts before God's divine mercy. Our response will be sung. Risen Lord, risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the gift of God's mercy may be powerfully proclaimed by the church and richly received by the faithful. We pray to the Lord, risen Lord, risen Lord. For all in positions of authority, may they exercise their office with the mercy that comes from God. We pray to the Lord, risen Lord, risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who, like Thomas, search, struggle, or doubt in their faith, may they know God's closeness, receive the consolation of the Holy Spirit, and be led to a faith seeking understanding. We pray to the Lord, risen Lord, risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our newly baptized and for our young people who this week will receive the sacrament of confirmation, May God grant them abundant gifts of the Holy Spirit, and may they remain faithful always to the graces they will receive. We pray to the Lord, risen Lord, risen Lord, in your mercy. For St. Agnes parishioners, that this faith community may mark itself as an Easter people by joyfully, gently, and humbly serving the needs of others. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially Ted Squires, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they come to the life of the blessed. We pray to the Lord. 
Amen. And our song during the presentation of gifts can be found in Breaking Bread. Hymn number 524, God of Mercy. Hymn number 524. Sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took his precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Graciously grant me peace and unity 
in accordance with your will and live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia. Our communion song can be found in Gather, hymn number 532, O Sons and Daughters, hymn number 532. Jesus. 
Once appeared while fasting a prayed so faithfully he said to her my daughter go and paint the vision that you see she saw his heart so full of light bright as a star upon the night rays of love were flowing outward like a fountain in the sky. And Jesus said, My divine mercy shall heal the souls in need. A grant all my griefs and my forgiveness to those who trust in me. Fasting. Trust 
parade and Jesus appeared to her again she wrote the words that he would say about his mercy for our sins the Lord would say have faith in me be not afraid I'll set you free I'll cleanse your soul and guide you on your way to my eternity. Let us pray. Draw the victory, Almighty God, that our reception of this gospel sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank you all for joining us for this Holy Mass. We wish you all a very blessed Divine Mercy Sunday. Today is also known as Domenica in Aldis, or Whit Sunday, White Sunday, because the newly baptized would wear their white elves all week long as a sign of their encounter with God's divine mercy. I'm uh, so happy we have with us tonight one of our adults who was baptized at the Easter Vigil, so I'm going to make him raise his hand so we can all welcome him to our community. Congratulations to Patrick. Augustine. We have a great name. Augustine the searcher. There are many in our culture and our world that search. And uh, we have to keep him in our prayers as he, he's a baby Catholic. He's learned the ways of the faith. He's always a, a, a good reminder and witness to each of us as well. But this week also on Monday we're going to welcome Bishop Kulik, our bishop, who will be here to celebrate the sacrament of confirmation with about 40 young people. And so we ask God's blessings on our young people and their families. And I want to invite you to join me here at the end of Mass today, praying our confirmation novena, which is found continually on the screen. Let us pray. Spirit of God, grant me and our confirmation the gift of wisdom.
and from breaking bread, let us go forth singing number 170, Alleluia is our song. <laughs> 